another rhino senator from Arizona. How ironic that Jeff Flake writes a book called A Conscience of a Conservative, meant to be an updated version of Senator Barry Goldwater's book, The Conscience of a Conservative, the book that got me involved in politics, the book that first attracted me to the Republican Party and to the libertarian, small government, conservative philosophy of Senator Barry Goldwater, my first political hero. But Flake has failed to be uh, a conservative reformer. He has failed to join the Trump revolution. If you are for a conservative reform agenda, Donald Trump is our president. He is the leader of this movement. Oddly enough, Senator Flake has decided that he's part of the status quo uh, crowd. Now, one of the most uh, intriguing uh, things going on today is the announced effort by my friend Steve Bannon, late of the Trump White House, to launch an active challenge to a number of sitting rhino Republican U.S. senators and indeed to challenge Mitch McConnell himself. Yesterday in the morning, the president appeared to give support to Bannon's effort. By the afternoon, he seems to have tempered that a bit. We recognize that he needs to try to continue to work with Senator Mitch McConnell, despite the fact that the Kentucky senator seems more intent in undermining uh, our president and his agenda than supporting it. Let me be very clear. I am 100 percent supportive of Steve Bannon's important efforts. I think that Dean Heller in Nevada, for example, needs to be uh, made an example of. Dean Heller, whose campaign is guided by the exact same strategist who took John Ensign's campaign and career into the toilet, the same individual who was helping uh, fund uh, the, uh, the odd arrangement between Senator Ensign and his administrative assistant uh, and the administrative assistant's wife, which ended up destroying Ensign's career, now seems to be in charge of Dean Heller's career. Uh, the challenger there, Danny Tarkanian, a good man, not viewed as a particularly strong candidate, but uh, certainly more than qualified to be a solid U.S. senator. There is no shame of running and losing. The only shame is not having the courage to run. Mr. Tarkanian has run previously uh, and been unsuccessful. In that sense, he reminds me a great deal of, oh, I don't know, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, the key thing to remember here is that the issues are bigger than Heller and Tarkanian. The issue is the Trump agenda, yes or no. That's why I stand shoulder to shoulder with Steve Bannon in his efforts to remake the Republican Party in the image of Donald Trump. The truth is, every Republican president in my lifetime has sought to remake the party in their image, starting with Abraham Lincoln, uh, certainly William McKinley, Colonel Theodore Roosevelt, Dwight David Eisenhower and his modern republicanism, Richard Nixon, who rebuilt a coalition that not only elected him, but went on to elect uh, Ronald Reagan and later Donald Trump, fusing the votes of traditional Republicans, Southern uh, moderate Democrats, urban Catholics, uh, and others that were habitually Democratic. Now we seek to remake the Republican Party in the image of Donald Trump. What does that mean? Well, a non-interventionist party, a party that isn't going to march off to endless foreign wars where our inherent national interests are not clear, a party that is going to redo 
the massive international trade agreements, which have benefited our train partners, but not ourselves. Uh, a party committed to real immigration reform so that the government is equipped to examine the application of any person who applies to come to this country legally to pursue the American dream. A party that is committed to a vibrant, growing, robust economy. Folks, when it comes down to the future of the Trump revolution, I cannot say more emphatically that the success of the president's tax reform program is the cornerstone to a political realignment, the president's reelection, and the end of the broken Democratic Party that seems only interested in racial and identity politics. It is essential that we have a business tax cut for all businesses across the board so that our tax rate is lower than Mexico, lower than Canada, lower than China, lower than Japan. The 20% proposed by the president is the right number. I'd like it to see it go to 15 in the out years of the Trump presidency. This is the most important fight that's on our agenda today. It's where the president needs your support. Where we need your support is at the Infowars.com store. I'm Roger Stone, and you're on the war room with Roger Stone and Owen Scheuer. This is part of the exciting new expanded programming here at Infowars.com. We're now programmed almost 10 hours a day. You can get David Knight uh, in the news in the morning. You can get Alex Jones, as always, midday. And now we wrap up uh, at the war room uh, before moving on to the nightly news. That is the tip of the spear. It is InfoWars, where I have learned about the fearlessness of Alex Jones and the entire crew who work at InfoWars. We are committed to bringing you uh, the facts, the truth, uh, and nothing but the truth. We don't have the preordained globalist agenda of the CNN, uh, CBS, NBC crowd. We're interested in truth here. And in order to continue to do exactly what allowed the election of President Donald J. Trump. In 2016, InfoWars was in the forefront of ending the mainstream media monopoly, indeed the stranglehold on all political information. There was a time when if it didn't happen on CBS, ABC, NBC, and then later CNN and Fox, well, it's the same as it not happening at all. But with the invention of the Internet, and the fact that more and more Americans are getting their news right here in a handheld device instead of getting it on the television set in the kitchen or the living room, that gave rise to a robust, vibrant, alternative media that now they seek to strangle. That's why we need your support. Breaking news today uh, about the Justice Department and Attorney General Jeff Sessions finally telling a U.S. Senate committee that Hillary Clinton is under investigation. Wow, Attorney General Sessions, <coughs> it's about time. What about the Obama NSA? What about Rice, Rogers, Clapper, Brennan, Jarrett? at all and the wholesale spying on Americans. I now have every reason to believe that Donald Trump, Paul Manafort, Carter Page, Roger Stone, and others were being monitored. I know that Alex Jones spoke to Donald Trump in that period. I know that conversation was being monitored. Where are the prosecutions for the wholesale violation of our civil liberties. Over 30,000 Americans, one in 10, were being, in essence, 
wiretapped by the Obama NSA. Compare that to Watergate. My new book, Tricky Dick, The Rise and Fall and Rise of Richard Milhouse Nixon, now available at Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble or Books A Million, details how the Watergate break-in was a operation infiltrated by the CIA. No one was ever successfully wiretapped. It was not a government-run operation. It was a rogue operation run amok, mounted without Richard Nixon's approval or knowledge, an amateur show put together by Gordon Liddy, but, uh, but compromised by veteran CIA operative James McCord. Compared that to what has just happened under the Obama NSA, where the government was doing the wiretapping, but the goal was the same as the goal of Watergate, political espionage and finding information that could be leveraged against candidate Donald Trump. In other words, the Obama administration was cheating, interfering in an American presidential election. (coughs) Where has Attorney General Sessions been on this important issue? Will he follow through, as he has with Hillary Clinton, uh, with a formal investigation to the spying that is going on, or that was going on, under the Obama NSA. There is no question that the revelations of the next two days have rocked, uh, pardon me, of the last two days, uh, principally by John Solomon of The Hill, (coughs) pardon me, and Sarah Carter of Circa News, have rocked Washington like nothing I have seen in the last two years. You see, psychological projection is a theory in which, uh, in psychology, one projects uh, their own shortcomings, their own misdeeds, and in order to defend themselves against their own unconscious impulses, they tend to project these feelings onto others. Hillary and Team Obama have raised this projection to an art form. First it was, oh, Trump's in bed with the Russians. Well, now we know that it was John and Tony Podesta, Bill and Hillary and Chelsea Clinton in bed with the Russians. And the whole claim that Trump is colluding with the Russians has collapsed before our very eyes. But it's worse, folks, much worse. We have just learned that the Obama administration and the Justice Department, including the FBI, knew of massive bribes to the Clintons in order to get control of U.S. uranium. Attorney General Jeff Sessions, where are the handcuffs? Where are the 5 a.m. raids? Where are the sealed indictments? Hope springs eternal. I'm Roger Stone, and we'll be right back on The War Room. Welcome back to The War Room. I'm your co-host, Roger Stone. Now, if you've been watching The War Room these last couple weeks, you know we have a new feature here at The War Room. We call it our A-Hole of the Week Award. That's when we search the news to find someone so ridiculous, so absurd, so asinine that they must be recognized for their stupid words or deeds. This week's A-hole of the week is former Congressman David Jolly of North Florida, defeated by Charlie Crist, a former governor in the last election. David Jolly called the President Donald Trump yesterday, quote, unstable, close quote, and, quote, risky when it comes to matters of national security. This in an interview with uh, MSNBC's Lawrence O'Donnell. Now, uh, I find uh, these views repugnant. Uh, I find uh, Congressman, uh, former Congressman Jolly, formerly 
Valley uh, to be undoubtedly a leaping, bounding, screaming a-hole of the week. Uh, that said, um, let me mention uh, another guy who appears to be in the sights uh, here at InfoWars. You may be familiar with former U.S. attorney Preet Bahara. Bahara got an undeserved reputation as a Mr. Clean uh, in the Obama administration for a series of high-profile convictions on both Wall Street and uh, in the political corruption arena of Albany. Well, it turns out that Mr. Bahara's reputation as Mr. Clean, as a white knight, is not everything it's cracked up to be. Uh, Extraordinarily, public documents regarding his uh, uh, attempt uh, uh, successfully to convict a Las Vegas investor named Billy Walters, William Billy Walters, showed that Preet Bahara knew about and approved the illegal leaking of grand jury testimony, that Preet Bahara uh, pressured witnesses to reverse their story and bear false witness against Mr. Walters, that he, in other cases, induced exculpatory witnesses to plead the Fifth Amendment lest they be indicted, Uh, for minor financial crimes that he uh, further um, knew of and approved of an FBI agent to leak grand jury testimony to the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. And then he lied to a federal judge about his knowledge. So let me put this in some perspective as a U.S. attorney, as a prosecutor, Preet Bahara knowingly, regularly violated the law to convict innocent men of violating the law. Stunning series of articles by Dr. Jerome Corsi here at Infowars.com. And the reason that the Preet Bahara story is important is because his activities were in concert with, with and coordinated with the Obama Justice Department, and the FBI under Robert Mueller and James Comey. So the leaks and trial in the press is the M.O. that President Donald Trump needs to pay attention to. If the president wants to know what's going to happen regarding special counsel Mueller, and his presidency, he needs to merely look at the case of Billy Walters and the illegal activities of his Justice Department uh, Benetoir, pre Bahara. Now, when Mr. Bahara left the U.S. Attorney's Office in New York, where he was handpicked by Senator Chuck Schumer, he not only attacked the president, but it was announced that he would land a very lucrative gig as a legal analyst for CNN. Mr. Bahara clearly has some serious questions to answer. Why would he pressure witnesses into lying? Why would he pressure other witnesses into uh, 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 taking the Fifth Amendment so as not to prove uh, to be exculpatory witnesses. Why would he countenance the FBI illegally leaking grand jury testimony? In short, why did Preet Bahara break the law to prosecute individuals who it appears have been completely innocent? Pay attention to this case, folks. This story has legs. But catch the series at InfoWars by Dr. Jerome Corsi, because, again, if the president wants to know what is going to happen to him, he simply needs to study this case carefully. Special counsel Robert Mueller has every intention of bringing charges or at least uh, publicly 
claiming that there is violation of the law by President Donald Trump. Now, we don't know if this is a fabricated case that that uh, revolves around the dismissal of Mr. Comey. We don't know whether this is a case that involves the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner. We do know that former White House Chief of Staff, Reince Priebus, met yesterday with Mueller's investigators, and the word on the street is that this was not good testimony for the president's son-in-law. In other words, some are playing into the hands of Mr. Mueller. Mr. Mueller will have no success bringing a charge against our president that pertains to Russian collusion, because in that investigation, Mr. Mueller is empty-handed. We know that Mr. Mueller has started delving into the president's real estate investments of 15 and 20 years ago. Relevance? None. We know that Mr. Mueller seeks to pressure my old colleague and boyhood friend, Paul Manafort, into bearing false witness against our president, claiming, yes, I was colluding with the Russians and Trump knew everything. Nonsense, falsehoods, myth, fabrication, lies, all, uh, I would say, concocted by the deep state in an effort to bring our president down. Now, let's be very clear. Alex Jones has been on the forefront, and I have supported him in our claims that this coup d'etat is coming, and it is. The president's going to need our support, but make no bones about it. The lawsuit against me by Protect Democracy is an attempt to distract me from helping the president at this crucial time. Imagine my shock yesterday when I went to my mailbox and found an invoice for another $87,000 in legal fees. I'll be right back to talk about this epic battle and how we help the president. The War Room. Infowars.com forward slash show. Welcome back. I'm Roger Stone, and I'm here with my colleague Owen Scheuer on the War Room. This is our expanded programming, uh, the brainchild of Alex Jones. We're now up to 10 hours of live programming a day, bringing you breaking news, uh, covering the topics and the issues that the others don't dare touch with a scrupulous regard for the truth and vetting the things that we uh, report here, unlike the mainstream media, which continually uh, treats you like a mushroom, keeping you in the dark and feeding you, well, you know the rest. Owen, oh, uh, what do you make of what's going on in Washington with this breaking uh, uh, Justice Department scandal regarding who was uh, colluding with the Russians, and who knew about it? Well, yesterday, when you and I were having a conversation about this, uh, we were getting pretty fired up. We were wondering what Jeff Sessions was waiting on. We were wondering what the Justice Department was waiting on. We were kind of getting fed up with having to cover all the revelations that are, you know, quote-unquote new or breaking, but had really broken years ago. We'd covered it. Uh, people have written books about it, including yourself. But to hear them in the committee today talk about an investigation that's ongoing potentially into some of these things about colluding with Russia, not on the Trump side that they've been looking into for over for about a year now, and they can't figure anything out. They can't find anything there. Just a bunch of conjecture, a bunch of conspiracy theories. While we continue to get evidence breaking that the FBI was colluding with the Obama administration, with Holder and with Clinton, with Lynch, and you go back and you look at Mueller and Rosenstein, they're basically leading a probe into investigating themselves. So perhaps 
I think maybe, you know, there is a element of the Trump administration that has a soft spot to we the people, to its constituency, and they do listen. So perhaps, you know, it's time for us to just start banging our heads, saying we want the cuffs, we want justice for these people. And the more we bang our head, I think the more they're going to respond. It's interesting to me, the petition that we uh, posted at Stone Cold Truth calling for the indictment of Hillary Clinton. What is that? Uh, somebody give me that uh, that link has been um, among the most powerful. Um, it's our intention to to uh, to present uh, that petition to the president. But um, believe me. The Trump White House, uh, the president, despite the very best efforts of General John Kelly uh, and the uh, handful of globalists who have managed to sneak under the tent here, uh, do their very best to uh, shield the president from uh, the kind of information that we report here at Infowars.com. You can go to ChargeHillaryNow.com. Uh, and join this important initiative. Our goal from the beginning has been to present hundreds of thousands of petition signatures to the president himself. Uh, and I have uh, a number of mutual friends uh, who will present this physically to the president when we are concluded. So you can go to charge Hillary clinton.com let me be clear we don't sell your data we're not marketing your data our interest here is in uh citizen action uh and nothing else so if you want to help us keep the pressure on the attorney general uh sign up at charge hillary clinton.com <clears throat> oh and uh, i also think that perhaps um, we are reaching critical mass, meaning I'm always surprised at how much uh, we predict here at InfoWars or we advise, and then we turn around and see what we have pushed happening. First, there was the pardon of Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who was uh, fighting trumped-up politicized charges where they charged him under the wrong statute to make sure that he couldn't get a jury trial of his peers. Instead, his fate was in the hands of a Obama appointed judge in that what was strictly a political prosecution. Then we know the Justice Department was illegally monitoring his communications during the trial with his own attorney. Additionally, they were monitoring or pardon me, they were in direct communication ex parte with the judge in that case. We here at InfoWars were the first to call for a pardon for Sheriff Joe, and lo and behold, that pardon happened. It was also InfoWars that advocated the changes in our health care, in our Obama care program that the president uh, initiated by executive order only last week. So we are having an impact here at InfoWars which is why we need uh, the support uh, of the info warrior community. Steal that one. Can I steal that one from you? If you want to kick George Soros and the gonads, go to infowarstore.com. I'm going to steal that from you, okay? Yeah, it, you may appropriate it at any time. I can't think of any better way to uh, to tackle uh, our, our uh, adversaries here, those who hate our culture, hate our heritage, hate what we stand for. Uh, let's be very clear what we're fighting over here. We believe in American exceptionalism. We believe in American sovereignty. We believe in American power. We believe in freedom. That's what InfoWars is all about. That's what Alex Jones is all about. That's what the War Room is all about. And unfortunately, we don't get the kind of giant corporate subsidies that some of our uh, our adversaries and competitors can take advantage of. We are a citizen funded revolution. We can depend only on the rank and file info warrior. So I can think of no better way.